Hallelujah, Lord God, we come today to give thanks and praise. This is the day that you made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. God, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you, Lord. Do with us what you will this morning. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is taken today from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 through 23, here in the New International Version of the Bible. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said to the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the mad guy, he was furious. And he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the mad guy. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard from Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was uh, reigning in Judea in the place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been born in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said to the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I want to continue on the theme that we started last night. Last night we spoke on the theme. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Today, I want to say a word on the subject, there's more to your story. There's more to your story. Last night, we celebrated the fact that in 2022, God composed for each of us a story comprised of God's character, amazing promises, and keeping power. And we said that we were going to stick to that story so it can be nourished, it can nourish us and others, regardless of what I can see with my eyes, with whether, whether what I can see with my eyes is optimistic and positive or desolate and negative. In order to keep that story fresh in our minds, we said that it would be helpful to record the story, to revisit the story regularly and to retell the story to others. We ought to thank God for our story, and I don't know about you, but I'm sticking to it. But I want to caution us not to think that that's all there is, because God is still adding chapters. Because when a story is told, it's one thing to recite the facts and accounts of the story. It's another thing to fit them into larger narrative. There's more to your story. Your story is not just a collection of facts and events that God has brought you through. God wants you to see that the events fit into a bigger picture. 
picture that is still being elucidated? What additional chapters will God write in 2023? Mary and Joseph already had a good story. They'd seen the Savior of the world born. The wise men had brought their gifts and they'd gone back to Babylon or wherever they came from somewhere in the east. The angelic fireworks show was amazing, but it's over. And the shepherds, who were excited to visit, have gone back, albeit transformed, and excited about the difference that the Christ child made in their lives. Mary and Joseph, however, now are alone again, left to figure out what all of this will mean for their lives. But God, but God doesn't let them sit on that story for long, as exciting as it was to see all the people around, gathered around a manger to see a child born. But God didn't let them sit on that story for long because that very night God sends an angel a messenger to give them guidance for the next chapter of their story. Because just like God wrote the story for the birth of the child, God has a chapter planned for the rearing and the development and the positioning of the child. Matthew is unique among the Gospels in that it highlights the fulfillment of prophecy within the human experience. It's meant in Matthew that, that we see frequently repeated the phrases, this is to fulfill what was spoken by prophet so-and-so. To remind the reader that what happened in the lives of those ordinary human beings is part of a larger narrative that has already been planned out, outlined, and that even the tragedies were not a surprise to God. This was God's son, and God was writing the story within the course of human events. Even the political transitions in Rome were not outside of the story. God was the author, and God had a position, had, had a purpose, and a plan in mind. I want somebody to know today that you might feel in the next few days you're left with all the post-holiday cleanup and stress and even post-holiday blues. Left to figure it out all by yourself. Visitation over. Back to a thankless job or no job. Back to an ungrateful folks. Back to drama in your own life. But if you are a child of God, born again by faith in God's Son Jesus, in the same way that God God is writing the story of your circumstances going forward. God is not surprised by what's going on in your life. God is aware of all of your complications and drama. And it's by and it's my assignment today to be your angelic reminder in the midst of your nightmare to remind you that God has already written a chapter for you in the next year. Beloved, we need to know today because there are some real Herods out there that have you on their hit list. Herods are real. There are some well-connected Herods. Some, uh, some of them in high places that have targeted us and people like us because our very existence threatens their dominant, dominance and their status quo control. And although parents may not be engaged in explicit genocide today, although in some ways they are, there is spiritual heritage, genocide going on, and spiritual genocide is the destruction of faith and spiritual vision by the parents of secularization and materialism and attacks on our values and the things that we as Christians hold dear. Spiritual genocide is the destruction of hope by the herods of greed, injustice, and apathy. Spiritual genocide, genocide, sorry, spiritual genocide is the destruction of love by the herods of uh, hatred, racism, and fear. But we need to know that God has already written your strategy. 
protector, and he's put Jesus in his Egyptian protection program in this passage. God has a witness protection program for believers. And the protect and protection programs are secretive to protect the identity of those who are targeted. However, they are written into the story for when it is most appropriate to reveal them. You might not get it now, but God has already worked it out in God's plan. One thing you can be sure of is God has written into your upcoming chapters a way of escape. Let's be clear. God sent Jesus to Egypt. God hid Jesus in Africa, a place where he blends in. Okay, y'all. Y'all get that? A place where he would blend in. Hit him in Africa. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. But, 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 but Egypt was also a place where God's people have not a history in. Be, be, but, but, but where the sons and daughters of old, of old Adam had been called out of Egypt because of bondage, the new Adam went to Egypt as a place of safety and refuge. It is amazing how God plots, how God's plots change. And how the places and things that we used to associate with safety, our Jerusalems and Bethlehems, can become life-threatening. And the places that have historically threatened us, like Egypt, can become a refuge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you gotta watch the shift in the plot, or you might miss your blessing. God can use places and other things that we have phobias of and turn them into safe places and refuges. God is sovereign. A way of escape is part of our upcoming chapters. When, when, when Herod is raging, God has written a way of escape when all craziness is kicking up in my life. There is a way of escape when Satan has you in his crosshairs. There is a way of escape when the politicians go, go, go crazy. There is a way of escape when bill collectors are all on my phone. There's a way of escape in your story. There is a way of escape because God is still writing your story. I like that. Yeah, that's right. Our eggs are strapped. Somebody else see it. The second thing is that our story includes a spoiler alert. And that spoiler alert is Herod's going to die at some point. Herod's don't last always. The story tells us that even though Herod's rage, they do fall. The man known as Herod the Great was basically a governor of the entirety of Palestine. He was hated by the Jews, however, because he was raised as a Jew, but came into a position of client king, represent the Roman, representing the Roman Empire in Palestine on behalf of the Roman uh, governor or the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus. So, so, so he was largely thought of as a turncoat because he was of Jewish background, now he's working for the Roman government. He was, if you will, a Jewish Uncle Tom. <laughs> An oppressor, thought of as an oppressor by the, Jew, the Jewish populace, but no matter how much power he had been granted by the empire, he was limited, finite, and mortal. And because of God, uh, and because God is the writer, and God is limitless, infinite, and immortal, he will eventually fall by the wayside. Herod will eventually fall. He, he doesn't have to have the whole story or, or access to the author. God told Joseph to stay there until God sent another message for him to move. Joseph simply had to wait on the Lord. Beloved, we serve the one who's already written the chapter to come. And we might not know the details, but the spoiler alert reminds us that Herod has an expiration date. Our job is simply to wait on the Lord. Herod will die someday. Satan's day is coming, and our day is drawing nigh. God's messenger is telling you today that there's going to be a time when Satan going down. Just wait on Jesus because Isaiah said they that wait on the Lord shall be 
You want to praise God because God says every is done. You want you 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 just have to wait on God to turn the page. Just wait on Him. Wait on the Lord. The next thing to remember is that your story includes a comeback plan. A, a comeback plan. Your future chapters do not leave you in exile. God had a temporary shelter in Egypt, uh, but, but, but when Herod died, it was time for Joseph, Mary, and Jesus to return. They could have stayed comfortably in Egypt for a long time. There was nobody threatening them there. There was nobody chasing them there. There was nobody trying to take them out. But that's not how the story was written to end. But divine purpose said it was time for them to come out. There was more prophecy that needed to be fulfilled. There were more chapters that needed to be completed. There was a divine destiny that needed to be lived out. And the author and finisher of our faith had to get Jesus out of Egypt so that he could fulfill God's plot. The messenger came and spoke to Joseph and said it was time to come out. Beloved, sometimes we mistake God's shelter from the storm for our permanent residence. We want to stay tucked away in secure places where trouble can't do us no harm. Where, where, where there's no risk or less risk of danger or of toxicity or of infection. Where there's peace and nothing to rub us the wrong way or threaten what we perceive to be our safety. Those places are important and we need to stay there while we have the chance. But beloved, there comes a time when the chapter changes and it's time for the setting to shift. When God takes us from what we found to be comfortable and comforting and nurturing for a time, and God calls us back into the game to stop hiding from the threats because God says, I've already written the chapter and I've got you covered. I've got you covered. Sometimes it's a physical space that we're hiding in. As an example, we might get mighty comfortable at home in isolation, not engaging the world or people. Sometimes it's an emotional space. We, we, we get, we're in an emotional hiding place, unwilling to open ourselves up and share ourselves with anybody. But there comes a time when God calls us out of our hiding places to get back in the battle because God has a new chapter for us to fulfill. Let me be clear. Because Herod was dead didn't mean that there was no longer a threat to Jesus' safety. Herod had sons. And they would actually not take kindly to a new king either. But God said, I've preserved you up to this hour. And no matter where you are, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your situation, I'm not going to stop preserving you because I've written the story and I've got my hand on you. All you have to do is follow my spirit and I will keep my hand on you and you have nothing to worry about. So come on out of Egypt because there's somebody I need you to reach. Come on out of Egypt because my destiny cannot be fulfilled in your life from your safe places. Come on out because I have more wonders to perform in your life. I know you Places, but I need to reposition you out of your comfort zone. The technology said, I stay in the garden with him, though the dew is still on the roses. But he bids me go through the voice of woe, the Son of God discloses. But he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Don't get it twisted. Your hiding place is not the setting for the end of your story. The last thing I want to share with you today is that your sto our story includes a repositioning plot shift. A repositioning plot shift. Wherever the plot shifts, 
you to, God is positioning you for growth. God readjusted the destination one more time. And the family ended up not in Bethlehem or Jerusalem or even in the province of Judea, but in Galilee in the place called Nazareth. Now you need to understand that Nazareth was not set city. Not one even university city. It was more like the worst neighborhoods of North Philly, Kensington, or West Philly. It, it, was, it was Palestine's Compton. Nazareth was not a place that you wanted to put on your resume. That's why in the book of John, when Peter told his brother Andrew that Jesus was from Nazareth, Peter said to Andrew, Can anything Praising my Savior, I'm praising my Savior. 